Scientists are not quick to admit when they're wrong, but when they are, other scientists will jump on the crazy one like kookaburras at a barbecue. Hey gang, Trace here for D News. The scientific community is a close-knit group. No single respected scientist dares make sweeping accusations about the existence of extraterrestrials without significant peer review checking double-checking results, huge debates. It just does not happen. So, earlier this year when scientist Chandra Wickram Singha said, we conclude that the identification of fossilized diatoms in the Palinarua meteorite is firmly established and unimpeachable, scientists went to red alert. In case you don't speak scientists, Wickram Singha was saying aliens. He was saying that they'd found proof of panspermia, the idea that life exists throughout the universe and is distributed to other planets via comets, asteroids, and meteorites. He was saying aliens. When the paper was published back in January, some people freaked out. People want to believe this. Who wouldn't want to believe this? Proof of aliens and evidence right here on Earth? Cool. But it was almost immediately debunked, even as people shared it all over the internet, talked about it in the media, and around water coolers all over the world. So how do we learn to spot shoddy science so this crap doesn't happen again? I talked to our resident skeptic, Ben Radford, for tips. Hey, Ben. Hey there. I see there's some pseudoscience bouncing around somewhere. How, how do you spot fake science? There's a couple ways that I try to do it. One of them is you look for a history of similar claims. So, for example, if you're, if you're looking at a cold fusion story or a free energy story, it helps to have some, some idea of the history behind it and provide a context for it. Because what happens otherwise is that these news stories just sort of sudden seem to appear out of nowhere. And it's like, oh, all of a sudden, oh my God, look at that, look at that. It's like, well, hold on here. You know, this is not the first time this has come up, and it's important to understand this and have a context to it. So that's that's one of the things. Another one is, of course, just what's the source? Did this new story come from your brother's, you know, gardener's boyfriend's cousin? You know, who, who's who's saying this? Earlier this year, it's interesting. There was a um, Bigfoot DNA uh, story uh, that was published, and it was it was fascinating because when you look at, well, well, hold on here, who, who's publishing this this piece on Bigfoot DNA? Well, it turns out that it's something called the De Novo Journal. De Novo meaning, of course, new. That is, it's a fake journal. In fact, apparently, the authors of this Bigfoot DNA study created the journal just for this study. A lot of times, if you go to the original source, uh, I mean, I understand not everybody has access to the original journals. If you can, that's a great way to do it, because otherwise, you're left at the mercy of however some particular writer happened to spin it. And, of course, the other question is, uh, what day is it? If it's April 1st? Eh, think about it. Boiling it down, pay attention. Media is meant to be consumed, but just like with food, you are what you eat. And you wouldn't just grab a random piece of food without checking it out first. What is your favorite type of pseudoscience? Aliens? Fad diets? M moon hoaxes? Let us know in the comments, and thanks a lot for tuning in to D News today. I'm Trace. Watch what you consume, everybody.